We have no presentations this evening. Uh, I'll go right into communications and reports. Uh, anybody have anything, any communication? Bob, uh, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to say something. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to make sure to thank all of the, the folks that work for the city of Cape Girardeau, um, the police department, the, the fire department, everybody in this city that's putting in long, hard hours because we are still at flood stage. So I know the pumping stations are still on and uh, there's a lot of people working a lot of time trying to keep this city healthy. And I just wanted to let them all know that I appreciate all that really hard work. Anybody else? Yeah, Bob. I did a. Hello. That's a good yeah. one. Anybody else? Nate. Oh, one. This is from a business standpoint, and obviously, my day-to-day -day profession is is bank. I would urge any business owners out there to go to their bank and discuss the the SBA disaster uh, relief loans. Uh, and especially the uh, payroll protection program loans that are, are uh, two and a half times um, uh, two and a half times your monthly uh, payroll. Um, they're already putting starting Friday. They started uh, allowing uh, uh, those applications to be processed, and, and there are some funding already going out from the SBA. So uh, urge business owners to do that. Uh, and nonprofits. So uh, I urge urge everyone out there to do that. Anybody else? I will just say that uh, it's amazing how quickly organizations and businesses have adapted to our coronavirus guidelines. More people are working from home, conference calls and having virtual meetings and that's become a way of life now for a while. You look around, buildings are locked, businesses are locked. Uh, they've just altered the way they do business and the way they deal with the public. And the bad thing is we may have to keep these precautions for a few weeks, but it still takes individual responsibility to, uh, to do social distancing and maintain cleanliness. I would like to thank all the individuals and the businesses who complied with all these regulations a very special case, like I said before, to all the healthcare workers, because they are the ones on the front line. We do have an official stay-at-home order uh, from Governor Parson, but again, it's up to each person to comply with that. And you'll also notice the CDC's recommended wearing a mask when you're out in public. It could be uh, anything, you know, a bandana, it could be, I don't, it doesn't make any sense with it, it's a sock, and I've seen some innovative ways people have made masks. Uh, but it, uh, it does prevent spreading the virus. It's not so much that it prevents you from getting it, but there are so many people walking around with this virus who don't have symptoms that you don't know. And, I've, and I, every time I talk to somebody about it, I tell them the same thing. Pretend like every person you see has the virus. And if you'll do that, you'll keep away from them and you'll, uh, you'll stay healthy throughout this whole thing. So that's all I had to say. Uh, yeah. If I could just add, um, I would uh, urge everyone to um, uh, check in with the local news, um, follow all the city um, uh, pages on, on Facebook and social media um, for, for our local, um, uh, you know, regulations and things that are going on. There's a lot, there's a lot of, um, you know, people are watching the news and maybe hearing about things that are going on in different states or different cities um, and, and getting, I think, maybe some false information about what perhaps is happening in Cape Girardeau. Um, so anyway, just urging everyone. I think that the city is doing a great job of getting um, some daily stuff out um, every day now. And um, just, you know, we need to, we need to be um, accurate to our, our local situation. I will say this, that every morning at 8.30, uh, we have an emergency management uh, meeting with, or a, or a telephone call, Zoom call, with uh, people from the county health department, uh, from uh, first responders, from Cape and Jackson and the county. Uh, there are probably 40 people or more on that call every morning. And we get updates from uh, 
uh, Southeast Hospital, from St. Francis Hospital, from the Public Health Department, and uh, updates uh, around what's going on here and what's going on around Missouri. And uh, really, in Missouri, we're not too bad off. Uh, we seem to have, uh, uh, there, are, there are places where there's PEP short, shortages, you know, in St. Louis periodically, but for the most part, uh, our state's in pretty good shape, and our city's in pretty good shape. Uh, Anybody else? Scott? Oh, Ryan, I see Ryan raising his hand. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I'd be remiss if I, if I didn't kind of repeat what I said at our last meeting when we were in the very beginning of this. I think it's uh, just important for uh, uh, the public to, um, as you said, heed the recommendations and now the order to uh, remember to uh, continue to uh, the social distancing guidelines, but remembering that uh, social distance is, uh, distancing is, is, is more about uh, putting a physical distance between you and, 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 and other people and uh, continuing to be connected to people is still um, uh, very important. Family, friends, colleagues. Um, so I would just encourage everyone to use the technology we have at our fingertips to continue to stay connected with uh, with everyone. It's very important uh, for our own um, uh, mental health that um, we're not isolating. Yes, you're right. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, and I would like to say uh, thanks to all of these uh, workers for the city of Cape. And I've also like to express this one thing here. I think that we really do need to uh, have a mask. So anybody that don't or can't find a mask, I'm making them right now for the different people that I care about and love. And if they need one, I'll make them one, okay? So that they won't have to worry about going out and not being able to protect themselves. Because you just don't know, you can't take a chance. So if they need one, all they gotta do is holler or call me and I'll make them one. All right, thank all right. you. All right. Nate? I wanna reiterate what everybody else said and just commend everybody and then also acknowledge like Bob just said that if, as far as Missouri goes as far as our community goes yes we're doing well but at the same time it's um, there's uh, as well as we're doing it's a significant event that there isn't one person that isn't affected by this and there's a lot of people suffering and they'll continue to suffer not only just to Ryan's point socio social emotional but there's businesses, individuals, couples that are that are suffering. And the longer this goes out, there's going to be more and more. And we need to be mindful of that and not just assume um, certain people are doing all right because they're putting on a good face. Because there's it, it will impact not only just our local account, economy, um, the state economy, the global economy. It'll continue to impact it significantly. Just wanted to acknowledge that. All right. Thanks. Anybody else? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just uh, wanted to uh, reiterate a few things that we've been doing and and uh, go back and kind of recount those things. Um, uh, before I do that, though, I want to remind folks, as they have these cloth masks, you have to regularly wash them. So on a nightly basis, you need to wash them uh, to keep them uh, clean and effective. Um, and keep you from picking up something on the other side of it. So uh, just a reminder on that. That's one of the things that I haven't heard enough of, I think, uh, as people have talked about them, but I think it has been a very good addition. <clears throat> well, it's been three weeks since our last meeting. And if you recall, three weeks ago, uh, we announced that night that we were closing City Hall, uh, that we're closing public works, that all but the lobbies were closed in fire and police that all of our community centers would be closing in a few days and programs shut down, uh, that no water uh, would be disconnected uh, because of the importance of, of that when it came to uh, uh, treating and, and staying away from the virus. And uh, we had begun to implement flex time and working from home uh, on, a, on a much grander scale. Uh, that night we um, discussed, took that action and um, felt like that uh, it's, it, it doesn't seem like it's been three weeks ago, but uh, since then, uh, in those next weeks, we uh, 
we closed the lobby of police and fire. We um, split our personnel into A's and B's and different ways of keeping uh, groups separate so that we could have uh, continuation and continuity in case somebody got infected and, and uh, groups of people start, started getting infected. So we split ourselves up that way. We then uh, later on closed our park amenities, the, the uh, places where people were congregating, um, uh, basketball courts, play, play equipment, uh, those type of things. Um, we also uh, uh, began to uh, change our, how we did business with police and fire, uh, limiting our interaction with, uh, with uh, uh, the public uh, where it was not, uh, where it was an emergency uh, with customer service the same way. Our development services began to do inspections differently by pictures and, and meeting outside, things like that. Plan reviews uh, continued to move online and, and uh, all of those things that the mayor uh, earlier talked about, other businesses changed how they did business. It really was in, a few, in just a few days and, and within a few weeks uh, transformed how we, how we as a city are doing business because we don't have a choice not to continue our business. Um, we are one of those essential services. It's, a, it's incredibly important that, that citizens have water, that they have sewer, that they have trash, that they have uh, the public protection of police, that they have the emergency services of fire, that developers can still um, move forward with their plans and their construction. Uh, all those things and a whole load more plus the, the uh, support of those things had to continue. Uh, we have to continue to mow our, um, our, our parks and trails uh, so that they don't uh, attract uh, disease and, and things. So we really did change what we did. Also, uh, Zoom meetings became, have become a daily part of what we do. Uh, we changed the hotel, motel, and restaurant tax to allow people to pay that late and without a, uh, without a fine or, a, uh, or interest fee. Uh, those are, were industries that are hit very hard. And so that was something that uh, they, that uh, you all urged us to do to, to help uh, who we could. And that was something we were able to do. We changed and added a liquor license uh, for folks that were doing deliveries, if they didn't have the proper license, we were able to give them a license in a very quick fashion to allow them to expand that license to allow them to do deliveries. Um, so we changed a lot, and that's just our regular business. Secondly, then, we, uh, we have set up an EOC, an Emergency Operations Center. We're under a united command under the county and the county health because of the type of, of emergency that this is. Um, the mayor mentioned our, our morning meetings of the leadership of the, that the United Command and how we go through with the hospitals, with health, with our PIO, with our public information campaign. We hear from our electeds, our administrative folks. And then we hear about resources and logistics and how, how do we go about that. We hear from the university and what they're doing and, and begin to plan and, and work together on all those things. Um, uh, when you're in the middle of these things, you can't be stepping on each other uh, everybody running over and trying to do the same thing. So, for instance, when it comes to doing masks, our logistics people work on that for everybody. So they're working on it for Cape uh, City, for the Jackson, for the county, for the fire districts. They're working, uh, working that together. That's just one example of the many things that are being worked on uh, with that. Uh, we also have a role definition so that uh, people know what their role is. So some of our folks that are that are experts in certain areas are doing it for the whole county. And some of the things that other experts have, um, the health folks, that's their expertise, they're doing that for the whole county. And uh, it's really been a good experience of United Command. And, and, uh, and that's really consumed big parts of our day. But again, we still have to operate the city and make sure our citizens get their essential services. We also have our connections with SEMA and FEMA. So, um, so a person from SEMA is in our our uh, meetings in the morning, and then we have contact with them and the various people uh, with them and, and logistics and the things um, throughout, uh, throughout the day. Um, we have uh, um, from SEMA, of course, into FEMA. So that ties all the way to FEMA, the federal government, and uh, you hear the president talk about resources and logistics and all those things, and all of that comes down uh, to our local level and affects us locally. Um, so that's how all of that alignment happens. And, 
Uh, sometimes people say, well, you're not doing anything. Well, <laughs> if, you, if you really begin to break down what we are doing every single day, um, we are really running two major <laughs> operations. The operation of, a, um, of, a, of our business of, of the city and the, the essential services of the city, which is a $60 million per year business operationally, and then we're running an entire emergency operation, which is millions of dollars of business over, over these weeks. So um, uh, that's, um, that's a lot of what we do. Um, there's been a lot of talk about enforcement. Um, of course, the governor's order has, has really defined what, uh, how we're approaching it in the whole state. And we think consistency within the whole state is important uh, because businesses want to be treated fairly across the whole state. And so uh, uh, the governor's order of fi defined essential, uh, what, what essential is, and it's a really long definition uh, from the ho Homeland Security. And uh, then he further went on and talked about uh, big box stores and how they need to limit people going in there. And that's a new regulation that we had. And, and we're, um, as a fire, uh, our fire code says how many people, what's the occupancy see of a building, uh, it's a percentage of that is how many they're allowing in those buildings. So we're, we're interacting with businesses and helping them uh, understand how many they can have in and how they can control that. Or also how they control their, their ingress and egress. They can't just lock the door. You have to be able to, to, to egress in case of fire. So a lot of those things we are doing and interacting with our businesses. Um, you know, it's our goal to to, uh, like I said, uh, uh, educate them on what the, what the governor's uh, call is and, uh, and help them understand that. And uh, they, they usually, once they understand it, uh, abide by it without any problems. Um, certainly, um, uh, there is, uh, besides the essential, there's also the small businesses with limits. Uh, the governor recognized there would be small businesses but, the, but he said, you can operate, but you have to operate with less uh, with 10 or less and with six feet of distance. So that's, th those are, are things that some businesses just can't do. It's hard to do certain things um, and still have six foot of business uh, of distance. Uh, it also allows for religious um, uh, folks, but it also continues to have the number 10 in a, in a locale and six feet of, of distance. So you can do it within those parameters. Um, his, his order allows that. Um, basically, you can do anything having to do with your health or pharmacy, foods, groceries, um, hardware, gas, uh, places of worship I mentioned. You can go take a walk, you can walk a trail, but you have to have the, the uh, distance requirements. Same with the place of worship. And uh, and then you can take deliveries. So I've had people ask about deliveries. You can take those. Uh, things you cannot do, you cannot uh, visit um, uh, closed city offices. You, you have to have six foot of distance and less than 10 people. And then you can't visit nursing homes and uh, long-term care and assisted living. And, um, and there are others that uh, you can't visit. And I, you know, I think Ryan mentioned this, you know, it really is important, I think, in that that, we, that you find how you can minister and uh, continue to interact with those folks. So can you, can you call, can you send them an email? If they do that, can you text them? Can you uh, send them a card? Uh, those are important things when it comes to, especially that group, because they, they, they really are forbidden people other than people who serve to be a part of that. Um, uh, enforcement, get ac asked a lot about enforcement. Uh, you know, our, our first uh, first act of enforcement is to talk to the business and see see what there are. There are exceptions to this and there are waivers that you can get. So the first thing we have to go and do is ask if there's, is there somebody that has a waiver? Uh, um, we, we find out what, you know, how they think they're, they meet either the essential or the other guidelines. And like I said, most times they comply. Um, if they don't comply and, and uh, we can't then uh, that's something where a person can go to the county health department and the county health department really has the authority to, to take action. Uh, um, usually they will do the same thing we do. They will first try to talk with them and uh, see how, how there is and see if they have a waiver. Um, so that's, uh, that's kind of how we've gone about it. And like I say, most, uh, most times we've been able to uh, navigate through it. 
Uh, lastly, we do have some good news. Um, some of the uh, new models of, of uh, how uh, this is going in Missouri uh, say our peak is, uh, is about a couple of weeks away. Um, that would be great. Um, that's a reduction in what, uh, what we had uh, seen in the past. Now, there's lots of models out there, and you may find another one that says something different. Um, uh, but this one is one that, uh, um, that uh, would be nice if it is the case, and we certainly hope it is. And uh, I, it does assume social distancing. It does assume a lot, you know, the things that we're doing. So we want to continue that. Um, lastly, and you all have mentioned it, and I appreciate you mentioning our workers. Every one of our workers is, is finding ways to continue to serve citizens of Cape. And it's been through dedication. Um, they've had to work through different hours and finding daycare because schools are out and, and all sorts of things in order to continue to serve. So they've kind of had that dual role too in their job. They work their job, but then they also have all these new things to, to worry about in their home life. So um, appreciate uh, your recognition of them and we want to recognize them as well. But that's where we are. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them for you. I think he pretty much said it all. I, uh, I really, you cannot imagine how well organized our emergency management uh, department is uh, at the county level. Uh, it is, uh, they're doing amazing things. And I, I still uh, uh, don't know why they included me in Cape Girardeau, but I still have a uh, conference call once a week with the governor, with the mayor of uh, Kansas City, St. Louis, Columbia, and Springfield. And uh, they want to keep, I guess, keep touch to the southeast part of the state. Uh, but uh, it's been uh, it's been uh, very good to have that close contact with the governor. And and he was correct. He was not going to do anything until he's you know told us mayors first. So uh, he's been true to his word. And uh, I sure wouldn't want to be in his shoes right now. Uh, a lot of pressure there. Any other communication reports? Uh Right. I have a question. Um, so, um, you know, obviously the media reported last week uh, that uh, Cape, <clears throat> Cape was being um, vetted as a, a potential alternative care site. Um, I guess my question is, uh, you know, um, do you have any more information on when and if they may be standing that alternative care site up in Cape? You know, I, I think that is a, uh, they're having to do that just in case it becomes necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, they originally looked at, uh, we're looking at something like the Show Me Center. Uh, last time I heard they were also looking at uh, dormitories on campus. Uh, they've uh, kind of ruled out motels in some respects here, but they are using motels in other places around the state. Uh, especially those that have exterior entrances and don't have a common hallway, uh, they have their own separate little heating and air unit. So it's not something that's going to get spread out the other rooms. But uh, I think that's still in the process. Well, um, I just, I know there's always a lot of speculation and I just didn't want false information to get out there that this was coming this week or anything. Um, I just wanted to make sure everyone knew that, um, you know, the situation we're in now, uh, you know, it doesn't seem to, necessarily warranted but it doesn't mean that if they stand up an alternative care site that it would be residents from here that they're being that are being treated there so it probably would not be residents from here right now we're our capacities uh not nearly been reached and most of the people here that have had it have not been hospitalized uh i think that i saw there were only five that were in the hospital of the 16 that had it uh I'm not saying that's not serious but uh, uh, on average, uh, most of the people that get this do not go in the hospital. So, so far, so good in the state of Missouri. Anybody else? Nate? I guess my question with um, the enforcement side that I keep getting from a number of my, the Ward 3 citizens is the, almost like a neighborhood watch. Where are they supposed to go when they see college parties happening still out in the yards or large gatherings happening out in the um in parks etc they asked me and as and what's the quick and dirty answer who should they call um if they are essentially observing um 
behavior that is non-compliant with the um, recommendations set forth for large gatherings or for interactions. Now, I would say since this is a public health crisis, uh, you know, your county health department is if they're having if it's a violation, it's a it's a health violation, and uh, it, but it's also a violation of the governor's direct order. So mm -hmm. um, exactly. It's, That's what I struggle with because they're going to call the county health department. Do they have a, a, a force out there that are going to go police? Or, I, I yeah. would that they would uh, get a phone call from the county health department first, asking them to, you know, not do it. If they keep doing it, then I think they could be prosecuted for it. But we don't want to have that fall under our, any sort of nuisance abatement or anything with, since our forces are already out there. So they can at least just go say, Hey, break it up guys. Or, it's not really the ordinance. Would you call that a nuisance abatement, Scott? I would call that a violation of the. It, um, the you know, technically it's not a, uh, a nuisance unless it's a party nuisance that we do have on the books. But, um, you know, we, we um, like I said before, we try to, especially with businesses, we try to try to engage and, and talk with them. But um, if, um, if they want to want to let us know, they, they, can um, like I said, our, our uh, one of the concerns we have about sending police to break that up is we aren't, you know, we aren't sending police to break up non, you know, violent things because we're trying not to expose them to virus, and that, and so it's a it's this difficult uh, balance. But I'll be glad to talk with with you individually about it, and hey, I get I get what you're asking and. And uh, let, let's talk about that a little bit and, and see, maybe I can uh, give some guidance and um, you know, maybe they can give uh, our office a call if they've, they've got those. You know, if it's a rental house, uh, you know, I would say you, know, you can call a person who owns a house and say, look, they're violating this policy. Uh, I don't know whether the owner of the house is gonna take any responsibility in that or not. But like I said before, this all boils down to individual responsibility. And if people don't have that, then there's not much you can do about that. Yeah, except for, I guess mine goes back to it's the governor's directive to comply with this and yes. we're doing uh, mobilizing emergency efforts, et cetera, that we could at least back them up by somehow, you know, cause you can't look up the, these people in the moment can't look up who the owner is of the property, if it's a rental property, if it's not owned, and then call that person. It's usually in the moment and then, you know, they see the large gathering and by the time they get someone there, the gathering might be gone or may not by the next day, obviously. So right. I guess that's what, in that moment, who are they supposed to, because well, it, it does fall down to individual responsibility, but all laws are that way. And so when- Yeah, typically they do give us, a, you know, if, if we get a call, then you know, we, we try to manage it. But uh, uh, the actual governor's, the actual governor's order, and I'll see if I can find it. Actually, the end of that says that it will be enforced by the health, the, the county, or it doesn't say county, it says the health, the local health agency. And uh, we do not have a health agency. We do not have a health director in, in the city. So that, that is uh, the county in our case. But that's, what, that's the expectation of the governor's office is that it be with them. That doesn't mean, like I said, that we don't try to work with people and, and, um, and break things up. So. Uh, let, let's talk about it some more and see if we can, um, uh, I can get you some better guidance. And the only thing that I want, I would add is after in talking with Mark Welker, the prosecuting attorney a lot, guys, I understand that residents want us to, I think there's this expectation out there that the, the county police or prosecutors are going to be uh, taking, giving tickets for this type of thing. That That's not, that's not going to happen. I mean, like Scott and Bob both said, this is falling under the health department. How they how they work within their department to do that. But the prosecuting attorney, the county sheriffs, and I, I mean, it's. I don't know how legally it's even enforceable. Legally, I mean, and that's I'm certain smart enough to abide by the rules and stop the spread of this virus. That's a critical thing. Yeah, absolutely. That's a critical thing. That there, I have been told 
the prosecuting attorney is not going to prosecute anybody for 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 not following this. So I mean, we are urging, we 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 urge if the health department can help to disperse those people, that's fine. But it's a very legally legality is is falling into play in this. I know that's. And I guess mine is not. My question isn't necessarily legality. It's we're standing in concert, working collaboratively with the health agency on daily calls, et cetera. The least we could do, we can't enforce it, but we could at least provide education, ed education or that urging and not just sit idly by and say, oh, well, it's not our job to go over there and tell them, hey, guys, you need to break this up. You know, here's what, you know, has been laid out. Yeah, they're not going to issue tickets. And ultimately, the people could say, yeah, you can't issue me a ticket. And OK, well, at least we did our part, you know. Well, I think this is an area where maybe our public information people can help. And I think the media can help. Uh, you know, the media's done a fantastic job. Uh, the KFES done a wonderful job, you know, with their stories. Uh, the Missourian John Rust has had some great editorials on, uh, on what's going on. And I think they're both very helpful. And, uh, you know, I think that would be something that they might help with too. Just get the information out there. Any other discussion? Any other, uh, Communications or reports? If not, uh, we'll go right into agenda review. Scott? Uh, yes, we have um, uh, no, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, no public hearings tonight. Uh, we do have uh, on our consent agenda the second and third readings of the construction easements along West End, the second and third readings of the quick claim deed. Uh, for on Puxella Drive, second, third reading of the um, uh, vacating of the interest on Sandy Pond Alley and Kickball Alley, uh, second, third reading on um, uh, our unimproved alley at, along Independence, 400 block of Independence, and the second, third reading of the um, changes in the development code of Chapter 25. Those are things that we approved uh, last meeting. This will be the finalization of those. And then and, uh, we have uh, two ordinances. Uh, one of them is for the contract for the fence, the perimeter fence out at the airport. And the other one is for a performance guarantee contract uh, within uh, VA Cape G uh, subdivision. Um, any questions on any of those? We also are uh, within this canceling the uh, special, agenda, special meeting that we had called for the April 10th. Uh, that was because of the election, which has now been uh, uh, moved to June. Any questions on those? If not, uh, we have uh, four new, odd, new ordinances. We have a permanent fiber optics easement uh, with SEMO Legends. Uh, this is the uh, development out on uh, North Sprig uh, that was built a couple of years ago. Um, uh, they now have their fiber optics in and we're getting the easement from them. Um, then we have a, a record plat for the Meadows of Whispering Oaks. It's been something that's been on the uh, works for a while. And then the record plat for the VA Cape G uh, subdivision. Uh, the last uh, bill we have is the special warranty deed selling and, and uh, going through the final uh, closing on our old police station sale to the Community Partnership of Southeast Missouri. Um, this was a uh, a sale that we had agreed to some time ago, uh, contingent upon the CDBG grant, which they were just recently awarded the CDBG grant. So this uh, finalizes that sale. That's all I have for tonight. Any questions? If not, we will now uh, go into regular session and have the roll call. Bruce is muted. There he is. There he is. Hi, this is Bruce Taylor, Deputy City Clerk, taking roll call. Ryan Essex. Here. Bob Fox. Here. Robbie Gard. Here. Stacy Kinder. Here. Shelly Moore. Here. Dan Preston. Here. Nate Thomas. Here. Thank you, Bruce. I'll now entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. 
Motion Second. by Thompson. And who seconded that? Shelly. Shelly. Shelly Moore seconded that motion. <laughs> yeah. All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carried unanimously. Uh, we have no public hearings tonight. Are there any individuals uh, in the uh, public room to have any comments about any item that's listed on the agenda this evening? This is Gail. There is no one in the room. Okay. There's no one in the room. We'll have none of those. At that point, uh, we'll go right into the consent agenda. Eric? Bill number 20-33, an ordinance accepting temporary construction easements from various property owners for the West End Boulevard project from Rose Street to Bourbon Street in the city of Cape Garden, Missouri. An ordinance accepting temporary construction easements from various property owners for the West End Boulevard project from Rose Street to Bourbon Street in the city of Cape Garden, Missouri. Number 20-48, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a quick claim deed to Todd Glade for property located at 1926 Fox Hollow Drive in the city of Cape Garden, Missouri. An ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a Quickly need to Todd Glade for property located at 1926 Fox Hollow Drive in the city of Cape Garden, Missouri. Number 20-50, an ordinance vacating the city's interest in unimproved Sandy Pond Alley and Kickball Alley right of way in the Walden Park subdivision in the city of Cape Garden, Missouri. An ordinance vacating the city's interest in unimproved Sandy Pond Alley and Kickball Alley right of way in the Walden Park subdivision in the city of Cape Garden, Missouri. Number 20-51, an ordinance vacating the city's interest in an unimproved alley between 414 and 418 Independence Street in the city of Cape Girard, Missouri. An ordinance vacating the city's interest in an unimproved alley between 414 and 418 Independence Street in the city of Cape Girard, Missouri. Number 20-52, an ordinance amending Chapter 25 of the Code of Ordinances of the city of Cape Girard, Missouri regarding various sections of the Development Code. An ordinance amending Chapter 25 of the Code of Ordinances of the city of Cape Girard, Missouri regarding various sections of the Development Code. Number 20-53, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute supplemental agreement number one with Crawford Murphy and Tilly Inc. for design services for the wildlife perimeter fence project at the Cape Girardeau Regional Airport. And bill number 20-54, resolution authorizing city manager to execute a performance guarantee agreement with JDKG LLC and BAKG subdivision in the city of Cape Girardeau, Missouri. You have before you the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion to approve yep. the consent agenda. Again, so moved. Motion by Ryan Essex. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Robbie Gard. Again, we'll try to keep this simple. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Not opposed. It's unanimous. New ordinances. Bill number 3-55, an ordinance accepting a permanent fiber optics easement from Seymour Legends LLC for 2070 North Spig Street in the city of Cape Girard, Missouri. So moved. Motion. Second. President seconded by Ryan Essex. Any further discussion on this? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Bill number 20-56, an ordinance approving the record plan of the Meadows and Whispering Oaks. Second. So moved. By Ryan Essex. Second. Second, Second by Stacy Kinder. Any further discussion on this resolution? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Again, that motion carries unanimously. Bill number 20-57, an ordinance approving the record plan of VA Cape G subdivision. So moved. Motion by Second. Nate. Seconded by? Nate. Nate. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> aye. Motion carries. Bill number 20-58, an order authorizing the mayor to execute a special warranty deed to Community Partnership of Southeast Missouri for property located at 40 South Spring Street in the city of Cape Charles, Missouri. So moved. Motion by Second. Ryan. Second by Ryan Essex. Any discussion? Taking a long time to get to this point with the old police station. It's going to be really nice to see that project get started. So kudos to community partnership. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Again, that motion carries unanimously. 
Uh, there are no appointments. Is there any other business we need to take care of this evening? Make a motion to adjourn. Motion Second. Back to adjourn. Seconded by Shelly. Sure. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you all for doing such a great job. And thank you to Gail and all the staff for putting this together. I think it was a huge success. I understand they had a little trouble getting it live on YouTube, but we'll get that on there later. I see her thumbs up. Thank you, Gail. And uh, thank you, Roger, for joining us. Thanks, everyone. See you guys. Thank you.